Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. Today's video deals with a new topic called velocity and a related concept called uniform motion. Uh, we've been talking about or I've been hinting about velocity for uh, several days now and how it's related to speed and how uh, it is different and today at the end of this lesson you're finally going to understand what that relationship is. So just pause the video for a moment to take a look at where we are in the homework schedule as well as what the learning goals and success criteria are. Okay, now that you're back, uh, here's what we're going to be talking about once again. How do you calculate this thing called velocity? And furthermore, what is something that's uh, actually called average velocity? If you think back to when we talked about average speed, well, this is its cousin, average velocity. And what do we mean by a new term called uniform motion? So to understand all this, let's dive right in, keep things moving here. Here we go. First of all, what do we mean when we talk about velocity? Well, before I can tell you that, let's think back to what we mean by average speed. If you recall, we learned this a while ago. The symbol is Vav, and the symbols on the other side of the equation are delta D over delta T. Remember, that's the total distance that you traveled divided by the total time taken. And so, to find distance, we think about, if you remember, the length of the path that we took. Okay, And of course, the total time is self-explanatory. So this is what you already know. But now let's learn about something called average velocity, which I sometimes talk about or refer to as the cousin of average speed, although the two are different. Now, just to confuse you, the symbols are going to look really similar. But if you notice, average velocity, it's going to be a vector, as you'll see in a moment. The reason it's a vector is because it's not distance over time. It's defined as displacement over time. So if you're paying attention to your vector symbols, there we go, displacement divided by time. If you're paying attention to your vector symbols, you'll realize that delta d with a vector hat is displacement, delta d with no vector hat is distance. And remember, displacement is very different sometimes than path length, distance. Remember, this is a straight line running from the start to the finish. You have to calculate that straight line's distance or magnitude, and you also have to find its direction. That is very different than the path length, the distance. So now that you understand what the formula is for average velocity, let's do a simple average velocity calculation and we're going to do it in one dimension. This is question number four out of your textbook Physics 11 by Addison Wesley and this question is in section 1.2. It talks about a delivery van which starts off 200 meters east of a police car and then the van moves to a position 600 meters east of the police car. The movement takes 18 seconds. So the first thing we're going to do is draw this out. And I'm, I'm going to imagine a road here, which is running in the east-west direction. So maybe we'll call this direction east, and that direction is west. And you can imagine yourself standing out on the sidewalk and watching this. Now there's supposed to be a police car, which I'm going to label P. And there's supposed to be a van, which starts off 200 meters east of the police car. So here's the van, V, and this initial the starting position is 200 meters. Now the van ends up 18 seconds later at a position that we describe as 600 meters to the east. So it's clear that the van has moved. And if the van moves, then it's of course got an average speed and it of course has an average velocity. What is the, dis the difference between the two here? Well, you're going to see that actually there's not a huge difference here. If we calculate the average velocity, we just have to find the displacement divided by the time. And if we look at the displacement, which is a straight line from the very start to the very finish, we see, well, that's easy. That looks to me like 
about 400 meters heading this way. So what would I write here? I'd put in 400 meters to the east and I would divide by 18 seconds and I'm going to leave it to you to punch that into your calculator just to save time. However, what I'd like you to do after you check this answer in the back of the book, what I'd like you to do is try the following. Uh, calculate the average speed using the formula V av equals distance over time and you're going to find out what is the distance? Well, from the picture you can see it's 400 meters and of course the time is still 18 seconds. And I know that some of you are going to say, hey, these are the same thing. The only difference is that one of them has direction, one of them doesn't. And uh, now that I think of it, I am going to punch these into my calculator here. Let's see what we get. 400 divided by 18. I get 22.2. .2. So let me just write these out to illustrate the point I'm trying to make here. This comes out to 22.2 .2 sig figged 22 meters per second east. And of course this one down here, the average speed, will also be 22 meters per second. No direction for speed. However, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to take this question out of the book and add a little bit to it. Let me just add a little bit by typing in here. Now suppose the van goes back 100 meters to the west in an additional, I don't know, let's say 10 seconds. Okay, and let's see what that does to the problem. So let me just put this in here. This is my little addition to the question. There we go. If we do this, now, what would be the average speed and the average uh, velocity? So let's write that in now. Calculate the average speed and average velocity for the entire trip. That's very important. We want to talk about the whole trip here. So let's fit that in there. Okay. I'm going to uh, cut and paste this into another window so that we can just have a little bit more space. Okay, copy and up we go to here. All right, let's continue with this problem here. What would you do now? Well, now something interesting happens because now, if I take another color just to show that we're going back by 100 meters, now we're going to end up somewhere along here. And now what will I have as my average speed? Average speed distance over time. See if you can follow along with me. We've gone the 400 meters that was to the east, but we've also come back 100 meters to the west. And the time, of course, in the beginning was 18 seconds. But now I've added 10 seconds. So let's see what I've done. That's 500 meters in 28 seconds. And I'll just run that through the calculator here. 500 divided by 28. I get a number of 17.9 meters per second. No east or west. This is just speed. But what do you get if you calculate the new average velocity. So let's write that down. Average velocity is displacement over time. And remember, going back to what we reviewed earlier, displacement is a straight line from start to finish. So keeping that in mind, where did we start? We started here. We went 400 meters east, but then came back 100 meters west to end here. How far is that? That's only 300 meters, still to the east. So now I'm going to put in 300 meters east. And of course, I'm still going to divide by the total time. That time is still ticking up. That gives me 300 meters east divided by 
the 28 seconds, and now I'm sure you can all see that the answer is going to be different than the average speed calculation. What do I get here? I get 10.7 meters per second. And by the way, that's to the east. So I hope this example serves to illustrate to you that average speed and average velocity, while their equations look the same, they are not simply the same number, just one of them has direction. You actually have to apply the definition of both. If you're doing average speed, you talk about the length of the path covered, the total length, and that'll give you some number. If you're doing average velocity, you have to remember that's part of displacement, and displacement is a straight line from start to finish, which if you backtrack, which is what happened here, you will not get the same number as your total distance. Okay, these have to be calculated separately. All right, let's move on. Uh, I'm not going to actually do this question. This is a question you'll recognize from the course pack. It's from a few days ago, or one day ago, actually, one lesson ago. It's on course pack page 5.1, and the question had a student walking from near the school all the way along Willowbrook to another intersection. And it, the question asks you to imagine an owl sitting in a tree at Windy Hill Park, the owl sees the student in the initial position at the school. That's why D initial, initial position, is shown. And it asks you what that vector is. Answers are given on the next page of the course pack. It asks you what is the final position relative to the owl. And that would be the dark purple vector here. And then it asks you what is the displacement. And knowing that displacement is a straight line from start to finish, you can calculate this red line here pointing down and to the right or in a sort of north and east, or, sorry, a south and east direction. And if you look on course pack page 5.2, the next page, they show you, uh, or rather I show you, how to answer the first few questions. But what I want you to focus on now are these questions, E and F, where they ask you, what is the average velocity? Well, knowing now that average velocity is displacement over time, and knowing how to calculate displacement, because that's what they ask you for right here in part C, what do you do? Well, very simply, take your answer from C and divide it by the time taken, which is given to you as 25 minutes in the question. All right. So this would be an example of velocity in two dimensions, where there's north and east, south and west, as opposed to what I showed you up here, which is velocity in one dimension, just back and forth, just east and west. Okay? So this is one where if you try this question on your own, and then uh, you later come back to it after having watched this video, I hope you can see where the answers come from. Check the answers on the next page. Okay, and oh, what do you know? This is something new for the videos from now on. Every, uh, every day from now on, I'm going to include something called the fact of the day. And the fact of the day is just a little way that I can keep track of who's watching the videos and who isn't. I'm going to throw in a little tidbit of information or a little calculation that you're going to have to memorize for the next day in class. And if you can do this, then there'll be a quick quiz, probably worth about one mark. Those marks will rack up. They will count for a small amount of the course. And also, I'm going to keep track of who's uh, scoring the best and remembering their facts of the day. And that person's going to win a prize either at the end of the unit or at the end of the semester. So what is today's fact of the day? Well, knowing that average velocity is displacement divided by time, and knowing that displacement is a straight line from start to finish, imagine this. Imagine if you are running in a circle around a track. So let's say the track starts here, and you go for a run, and you run in a circle. This could be the track outside of the school, maybe track and field, something like that. You go all the way around, and let's say the total distance is uh, 400 meters all the way around. It's a 400 meter track. And let's suppose also, suppose I can spell here, there we go, 400 meter track. And let's suppose you're really, really good at this, and you can do this in 
48 seconds. Question for you, what would be your average velocity to go all the way around the track once in 48 seconds? Well, you just plug into here your displacement and suddenly you realize, hey, wait a minute, if you go all the way around the track once, you started and finished in the same place. Your displacement is zero. Your time is still 48 seconds, so your average velocity is zero? It is. In fact, in a car race, for example, where the racers start and end at the same place, their average velocity is zero? Could you imagine that? You're in a Formula One car race going hundreds and hundreds of miles an hour, and at the end of it all, when the guy gets up on the podium with the champagne and wins however many millions of dollars, everyone says, congratulations, you won the race, your average velocity was zero. It's true. However, something isn't zero. What is that something? Of course, it's the average speed distance over time. In the case of our track athlete here, the distance would, of course, still be 400 meters. And the time would, of course, be 48 seconds. And that would give you something like what I'm punching into my calculator now, 8.3, I get, meters per second. So that's an interesting fact. Now you get to laugh at people who go hundreds of miles an hour and tell them, hey, screw you, your average velocity, zero. We're going to finish off with a discussion of instantaneous velocity and Formula One racing. I'd like you to take a look at these cars that are going around a curve on the track. And notice how they're all going in different directions, of course, because they're all in different parts of the turn. Well, these vectors represent not their average velocities over a certain time period, but rather their instantaneous velocities at a given moment. All you have to remember here is that the instantaneous velocity is what we call tangent to the path. In other words, if you think of a curved path, such as the one you see here, and you think of the math idea that you learned probably uh, a year ago, I'd say, a tangent to a path is a line that touches in just one place. So examples of tangents would be like these lines that I'm drawing here. And any time an object is moving on a curved path, its direction at any given moment is tangent to the path. So the instantaneous velocity, which would be written as V I N S T, is whatever your speed is at that moment, and the direction that you're going, which is tangent to the path. We finish up with a quick concept, an important one, called uniform motion. What do we mean when we say uniform motion? Well, of course, the word uniform, which has the word uni, which means one, means one kind of motion, movement. What do we mean by one kind of movement? Simple. If your movement is of one kind, in other words, it's unchanging, then we have what's called uniform motion. What does unchanging motion mean? It means unchanging velocity. And of course, velocity is a vector. It's got a magnitude and it's got a direction. So if you hear the term uniform motion, it means that the magnitude of your velocity, which is kind of like saying how fast, and the direction, which is self-explanatory, these are unchanging. These cars here are not undergoing uniform motion because their direction keeps changing. And of course, if they speed up or slow down, that's also not uniform motion. But you, when you're driving along Bayview, nice straight road, steady speed, that would be uniform motion. And we're going to talk more about this in the coming days. So keep that term in the back of your head. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in class. Bye now.